Hi there, I'm WBRC First Alert Chief Meteorologist J.P. Dice. Welcome in to Behind the Front, our weekly weather podcast. We talk about all things weather, and this is super interesting. We've been trying to organize this for a little while now, and especially as we get into the tropical season, I've got with me, and uh, the only, uh, to my knowledge, that I've ever talked to, Cruise Line Chief Meteorologist, it's Jim Van Fleet, with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. And first off, Jim, how does one become a meteorologist for a cruise line? I can understand how critical weather is for any any folks out in the, in the maritime industry, but that sounds like a neat job. It's a phenomenal job, JP. And I, I will tell you, I'm still honestly getting my head around to how to answer that correctly because I was a TV guy like you for so long that I thought that was what I would ride all the way through my career. And right about the time it was time for me to start looking for the next job when I was up in Tampa doing Weather Last, uh, I was looking at an opportunity in L.A. uh, with a CBS station there. And then a recruiter came out, uh, a guy that actually from Royal went to the University of Florida, had watched me when I was on Fox in Orlando, and started reaching out. And it was one of those because the job never existed. It really intrigued me. You, it was an opportunity to write your own script, uh, make the job anything you wanted to be. When I came down to interview, they wanted uh, very much my ideas as long, uh, along with their ideas. What could the position be? And I think that's what they were looking for, somebody who had some vision. Yeah, we get the data side of it, but what could the job grow to be? And I think they also wanted to pull on the broadcast background, so somebody who has the science education could talk to the guest when we need to make itinerary changes or if a decision's made just to help further explain the reasoning or and show say this right here is why we want to make a change and and so i think they were pulling from that background from me and i was bringing ideas to the table of it, it basically is a wide open job well, as you know weather touches everybody out there on the face of the planet all over the world impacts their lives every single day so you could make it anything you wanted it to be now let me ask you this this is what seems like it would be the challenge to me jim is i forecast like like you you did for many years a number of counties i've got a pretty large (laughs) market area 24 counties that i forecast for my goodness, what's your forecast area? This this is this encompasses a lot. It does. In fact, uh, that's the joke when I took the job. I was like, I've gone from 11 counties in Tampa and what 15 counties in Dallas. Uh, now the viewing area is the globe, and it really is. I mean, we have ships all over the world, and at different times of the year, we move them to other parts of the world. So. I'm uh, on my desk right now. I've got Asia, Europe, Alaska, U.S., Caribbean, as far as forecast charts. I think for me, I always love TV, and I don't don't ever want to make it sound like I was tired of TV, although I will say I was quite frustrated with TV management and owners, and it didn't seem like that was going to be getting better anytime soon. So I think it was just a, a new challenge for me that I'm a better employee when I've got a ton of stuff in front of me and challenges to overcome. So if I'm in that same monotonous day-to-day minutia, I get bored very quickly. And when I get bored is when I get in trouble. So just knowing my own professional work ethic, I needed something grabbing my attention every few hours. And that's exactly what this job does. As soon as I put the Caribbean to bed, so to speak, and they're good to go, in a few hours, China's waking up, Japan's waking up, and it's time to go to work on them. Now, it sounds like that it, at times, depending on the weather situation, it could almost be uh, overwhelming because you could have some active weather in, in several different parts of the uh, world that is of interest to the ships. Correct. And so just to expand, so you know, I, I most cruise lines before my position here, they had a third party, like a vendor party, you call it. And that team of meteorologists was contracted, and, and you see this with other lines. They send transit forecasts, you know, 24-7 all over the world to the ships. But for me to come in, what we didn't have before this position was a scientist in-house who could explain the difference in weather models and say, all right, well, because a lot of, surprisingly, a lot of captains would think that, you know, they're getting information and that's the official forecast. 
and not understanding, well, that's the American model, that's the Canadian model, European, the Navy model, what have you, and just explaining the biases, the differences. I, I think more than anything, a lot of our captains already are well-versed in weather, but some of our lower-ranking officers just coming up through the academy, like a second officer, have no idea that – they think they're just looking at an official forecast. So a lot of times I'm doing more educating than forecasting in these first couple of years. Now it's a lot more forecasting since I've spent time with them on the ships and got them up to speed on what the data means that they're looking at. So I, I'm aware that during the tropical season in the Caribbean and the Atlantic, certainly uh, hurricanes, tropical storms, uh, tropical depressions, all of that's concerning. You have those storms in the Pacific as well. Uh, what yeah. else are you concerned with besides the obvious? You know, you don't a, a ship doesn't want to be navigated toward toward a hurricane. But there, what's the daily stuff that you're concerned about? That, I love this question because I often am interviewed by non meteorologists, so they don't think to ask it. And yes, the hurricanes and the typhoons. We're busy with those, keeping everybody away. And in fact, uh, even though we have fewer ships over in Asia, as you probably know, the, you know, the West Pacific gets about twice as many typhoons as what we see in the hurricanes on any average year. What keeps me up at night, so to speak, are the one-offs. You know, if uh, even though yes, I'm in house, and my job is to keep you in the best weather as much as possible, as long as possible. The Caribbean in the summertime, you know, I can't guarantee you're not going to hear a clap of thunder or see a rain shower. That's not realistic. But what I want to do is keep you away from any rapid development, of uh, any thunderstorm complex, frontal systems that are intensifying as they move into an area where we know it's out there, but it, do the models have a good handle on it? And, and one, to take it a step farther, a lot of what I work with the officers on you know, our models over the U.S., for example, are pretty good nowadays, but a lot of that has become because of the weather odds. The stations are everywhere all over the U.S., but you start getting out into the oceans, the great majority of the Earth, and your data reported every single day, there's so many holes to fill in. So the forecast gets less um, reliable, depending, sure. you know, the, on any of the models you look at. And so beginning to see those trends and, and learning and teaching our guys, that's what keeps me up is, you know, do we have a good handle on this system? Because the observations in the area are few and far between. So can I put a lot of faith in the European right now in this region? And so it's a lot of learning that and then teaching that to our officers of why the forecast changed so rapidly in areas that don't have good weather odds. Now, how do you, how are you able to uh, communicate this directly uh, to the crew of the ship. I know, you know, these ships are, are high-tech vessels. They have a, yeah. a lot of radar information, a lot of satellite data that's uh, delivered into the into the ship. But how is your information actually relayed to the bridge? So I send stuff uh, all day long and all night long overseas, uh, Europe, Asia. But I'm constantly – and I'll communicate with them a multitude of ways. I'll pick up the phone. I'll send an email, and I'll send them my data. And basically I'll draw graphics and say, this is what I'm watching out for. This is what we need to be mindful of. Could this impact this arrival? Would we want to possibly switch ports? All of those options. Video conferencing is another way. Um, but primarily, phone calls and emails are the fastest ways. And, yeah, they have great technology. I pretty much can, on my cell phone, call any ship I need to at any point in the day, and it'll ring the bridge. And, of course, they have real-time radar on there so they can, they can see uh, something in front of them. JP, we not only have radar, we have multiple radars. I have X band and S band on a good majority of our ships. So they're 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 as as we would imagine, very well equipped uh, vessels. Yes. I mean, anybody that hasn't yeah, been on the on, on, yeah, a, on a cruise, it's, uh, it's and I was very pleased when I came you know to the position because as you know, when you change jobs on TV stations, all the toys you may have had at the previous station, you may not have at this station you're going to. It might be a better job, but might need to do some work on you know the graphics or the radars. Or the, the cameras and stuff, but no, they, um, I, I'll honestly say for me, again, I love TV, but coming to this company, they walk the walk. They, they are so smart. I've never worked with a team that has the depth of what Royal Caribbean has. So yes, a lot of the things that you would assume or presume and hope they have, they already did. Yeah. What they needed was a scientist in-house just to help educate them on models and weather observations and patterns and then help advise executives who may not be 
you know, it may have been a few years since they were a uh, captain on the bridge or what have you, to just communicate that to the office because a lot of times it's the office in Miami that's supporting the ship. So the captain makes a decision to change a port. That's a lot of people behind the scenes that need to do things to make that as smoothly as possible for our guests. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Durante Home Exteriors, winner of the 2018 North Alabama Torch Award for Ethics. Just ask our customers why. Durante, unlike any other builder I've worked with, made me feel like I was going to end up with the deck that I wanted. Oh, we love our new deck. And this is a deck we actually spend time on. It's Durante's Midsummer Sale. Right now, save 2019 off a new composite deck or a brand new sunroom. It's Durante Home Exteriors, built to last. How often do you get the opportunity to uh, head out and, and, and go out on a ship and visit with folks on the bridge and get the, because you don't have to be on the ship, you know, you, you could be somewhere else. How often do you get to go out yeah. there and talk to people and, you know, shake hands with the uh, crew members? So uh, that's another thing, again, I love about this company because I knew it would be a huge investment, but, you know, one of my ideas coming to this, talking to my SVP of Marine Operations was, I, I think if you do this job right, Whoever it is, they will not be successful unless they can get out there and shake the hands and look the people in the eye that they're going to be guiding and advising. And that meant sending that person around the world a few times. <laughs> and so in two and a half years, I've, if you do the math on the mileage, I, just that I've flown, not that I've sailed on our ships, I've been around the world in two and a half years roughly five times. But that's the investment this company has put in me in the position because they already understand the more comfortable those people are on the other end of the phone call, the video conference, the more they'll trust what I'm telling them. And so half of the year, to answer your question, the quieter half of uh, the northern hemisphere winter, that's when I'm out on the ships. And I will spend about six months where I'm only in Miami a day here, three days there, four days there. The rest of the time I'm gone. New Zealand, Australia, China, Europe. I was just in the Middle East a few weeks ago with our new ship as she went over to Asia. Now that we're into the tropical season, I call it uh, weatherman is grounded. <laughs> he ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and Hi. that's just so I can be in a central location that no matter what happens uh, anywhere, if it's a typhoon, if it's a, even an eastern Pacific hurricane, you know, they, that way they know where I'm at and they know where I'll be and I can advise here. So basically June to the holidays, I stay in Miami. As soon as we get through New Year's, I'm on a plane, and you might see me a day or two here and there, but up until about mid-May, I'm not here that much at all. And then I get in, a, I try getting into a routine about mid-May, so by the time we hit June 1st, people are used to seeing me around again regularly and, and know that I'm here. I tell you what, uh, with that kind of description, I'm gonna, the, the next question, Jim, you need an assistant. Uh, of any... <laughs> it's funny how that usually follows that. You need, you need. Fact, I'll tell you, if we have time, I'll tell you a funny story. Go ahead, um, yeah. My boss, his name is Greg Purdy. He's the SBP of Marina Operations. One day I'm sitting in his office, and he goes, Michael, our CEO, by the way, Michael Bailey, he was just curious and asking me, he's like, do you think Jim's happy? Now, time out for a second. JP, when's the last time your general manager or news director just looked you in the eye and said, are you happy? Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, just this... don't see much of that in corporate no, America. So the fact really. that, A, the CEO even cared to ask, yeah. he, I'm hooked. I, I am so loyal to this company, it's not even funny. Secondly, the pulse that my boss has on the world, this will show you why he's the best boss in the world. Without missing a beat, he looked at the CEO, Michael, and says, uh, I think he's the envy of his industry right now. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. It, it, you can't get any better than this. And just the fact that I get to do what I love doing, and at the same time, I'm still helping people. Yeah, it's not the same as TV where you've got this core group of people watching you every day. And, in fact, most people don't even know I'm helping them. I kind of like that now. I'm operating in the shadows. But my team, I see all the time. And I just – I, I, it's hard to explain, but to me, it is the best job on the face of the planet. And I tell you what, here at WBRC, we do not have a midnight buffet. We do not have one of those. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, there's, there's quite a few perks that do come with it, obviously, because 
people around me are generally in a good mood. They're on vacation versus an angry viewer that's like, why did you cut into my programming? You know, I, I get very few complaints and negativity these days. Well, you know who we're talking to here in a, in a few weeks, I'll tell you, we have interesting, really interesting guests. And, you know, you're an Oklahoma guy. I've had everybody yes. on from, uh, I had Gary England on the program before who was. Oh, yeah. Gary was, yeah, he was a great interview. Coming up here in a uh, in a couple of weeks, I've got uh, FedEx. I'm going to be talking to the meteorologists at FedEx, which that's also critical because they're trying to get stuff from point A to point B. It's hugely critical. Uh, and when I when I first started looking at the job, I equated the cruise line industry, not saying Royal, but just all of them. Uh, similar to the airline industry, thinking there's a team of Mets all over the place. But it, it was more vendor that you saw. In fact, it was all vendors where it was third party that, yes, there's a team of Mets, but they're not owned by, say, American Airlines or FedEx or anything like that. So that's the other part of it. I mean, how many times in your life are you going to be offered a position where you could say you were the first in the world, not in the country, not in the state, but the first in the world to be able to do that? That that is incredible. So yeah, that that is quite the leap from the uh, the television studio to the ship to the forecasting for uh, really a global reach. Uh, you know, I appreciate you taking the time today, uh, Jim. I you know we tried to set this up for a while. We made everything connect yeah. here, and I think we originally connected. It was like on some Facebook uh, broadcast forum or something. It's like I want to talk to that guy. Can you set me up with him? And you emailed yeah, me, yeah. so we made it happen. I'm glad you did, JP. I would love to talk to you again another time. I love these podcast ideas. I think it's a nice way to kind of deep dive into into stuff that you don't typically get to see in a you know minute and a half package on television or what have you. So I really like what you're doing. All right, I appreciate it. You guys uh, enjoy the cruise, and uh, it's it's a, an incredibly interesting uh, part of meteorology that most people do not think of. This is Jim Van Fleet with Royal Caribbean. He is there chief meteorologist. So when you're out there sailing on, on your next Royal Caribbean cruise and you're dodging a storm or everything's working out seamlessly because the weather is so fantastic, it may be Jim's handiwork helping helping the, uh, the folks on the bridge navigate around some of that bad weather. So Jim, I appreciate it. Thank you, JP. And, uh, and next time you're down in Miami, give us a shout. I'll walk you through the Weather Center and our campus here. Okay, I will. I'll shoot you an email. Good to talk to all of you guys, and uh, and I'll, I'll send you a link to Behind the Front so you can enjoy. All right. Have a great one, JP. JP Dice here with uh, Jim Van Fleet. We'll see you next time, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us. It has been a uh, fantastic uh, program here so far over the last year or so. We have uh, now uh, well over 100,000 downloads, so we thank each and every one of you uh, for uh, downloading Behind the Front, and don't be afraid to share it with a friend. You can subscribe to this show on your favorite podcast app. There's a number of ways to do it. Apple Podcast, yeah, you can do it on iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, and we'd like you to rate and review the show. That helps us improve. We like to have feedback. We, we like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Feedback, questions, right here on Behind the Front. You can email us. We have our own email address, behind the front at wbrc.com. Again, that's behind the front at WBRC.com. Thanks for joining us. Durante Home Exteriors, winner of the 2018 North Alabama Torch Award for Ethics. Just ask our customers why. It was wonderful. They just put them in. And they're so much better than what we had before. And I couldn't get over the workmen. They were so efficient. If you want a job done right, call Durante. It's Durante's Midsummer Sale. Get $2,019 off complete siding installation or a house full of new windows. It's Durante Home Exteriors, built to last.